In this video, we will install Java and IntelliJ on Mac and get started with Spark Scala and Hive programming with Maven Dependency Management. For Windows installation video, check the link in the description. Let's open a terminal and check if Java is already installed. Type Java space version to check. Java is not found. Go to the Oracle website and download Java 11 for Mac. Search for JDK 11 for Mac and find the official Oracle download link. Click the download link. Scroll down and select Java 11. Although newer versions exist, Java 8 and 11 are still widely used in the industry. For this course, we will use Java 11, but you can also use Java 8. Select the 64-bit DMG installer. Log in to the Oracle website to proceed with the download. Once the download is complete, navigate to the Downloads folder. Click on the JDK package to start the installation. You may need to enter your admin password. The installation is successful. Remove the installer file. Close and reopen the terminal. Type Java space version again to confirm the installation. You should see Java 11.0.18 installed. Now let's install IntelliJ. Search for IntelliJ for Mac and visit the JetBrains website. Download the Community Edition for Mac, which is free. Allow the download to complete. Open the installer and move IntelliJ to the Applications folder. IntelliJ is now installed. Open IntelliJ IDEA. Agree to the terms and continue. You can choose not to share any data. Next, install the Scala plugin, since we will be working with Spark and Scala. Search for Scala under the Marketplace. Select Scala and click Install. Once the installation is complete, restart IntelliJ. Now let's create a new Scala project. IntelliJ will automatically detect Java 11 installed on the Mac. Ensure the build type is Maven. Give the project a name and choose a storage location. Select Java as the language, but you can change it to Scala later. Click Create. Wait for the files to be indexed. 
When prompted, select Always Download. Once indexing is complete, run a simple Java class. You should see Hello World printed in the console. Now, let's convert the Java project to Scala. Right-click on Java, select Refactor and rename it to Scala. Right-click on Scala, but there is no option to add a Scala class yet. We need to add framework support. Right-click the project, select Add Framework Support, and choose Scala. Download Scala version 2.13 as it is compatible with Spark 3.1. Next, go to the Maven website and search for Spark Scala dependencies. Find the latest version of Spark Core and Spark SQL dependencies. Spark version 3.3.1 works with Scala 2.13, and that's the version we will use. Click OK, it will download. Then click OK again. Right click on Scala, select New, and choose Scala class. Let's add a class. It will be of type Object, because in Scala, the starting point is a singleton object. Type main and press tab. It will generate the Scala main method. Inside the main method, write a print statement to check if it runs correctly. Click the run icon. If the printed line appears in the console, Scala is set up correctly. Next, we will add some Spark code to this program. We are using Maven for dependency management. Any Spark library we use needs to be added to the pom.xml file. Once added, the required libraries will be downloaded automatically. Create a dependency section, then visit the Maven website and copy the Spark core dependency. We also need to add the Spark SQL dependency. Select the latest version, then copy and paste the Spark SQL dependency into pom.xml. Right-click on pom.xml, select Maven, and click Reload Project. This will download all necessary libraries for Spark and Spark SQL. Once downloaded, the text color will change from red to white, indicating the libraries are ready. Now let's go back to the class and reconfigure the Scala SDK. Click on the provided link to set up Scala SDK again. Every time Maven reloads, Scala gets detached from the project. We need to mark Scala as the source directory. Right-click on the Scala folder and select Mark Directory as Sources Root. The folder icon should turn green, confirming the setup is correct. Let's run the program to verify if it runs properly. 
It looks good. Next, we will create a Spark session. Hover over Spark Session and import the Spark Session library. The library is now imported. We will remove the Enable Hive support setting for now. We will create a simple Spark session with an application name and local configuration. Let's run the program. It failed. The error occurred because the dependency scope is set to provided in palm.xml. We need to change the Spark SQL dependency scope to compile so the libraries are available at compile time. Reload the Maven project. Run Maven reload project and set up Scala again. Now it should run correctly. Exit code zero confirms successful completion and that we have a working Spark session. If you are in an office or restricted environment, you may need to set the Spark driver host explicitly to 127.0.0.1. This is the local host and setting it ensures the Spark session can be created. Now we will create a data frame using this Spark session. First, we create a sequence, then convert it into a data frame with course ID and course name as column headings. The program executed successfully, and the data frame is printed in the console. Next, we will write the data frame content to a CSV file. Unlike Windows, Mac does not require a WinUtils file. The process just works. The execution is complete, and we can see the first DF directory containing the CSV file with the data frame content. Now let's enable Hive support in the Spark session. Let's run the program. It will likely fail because we have not added the Spark Hive dependencies. Go to the Maven website copy the SparkHive dependency and paste it into palm.xml. Look for Spark Project Hive. Select the latest version, 3.3.1 for Scala, 2.13, and copy the dependency. Paste it into palm.xml. Reload the Maven project. Before reloading, ensure the dependency scope is set to compile. Now set up Scala again and run the program. It gave an error because the output directory already exists. Let's delete the existing directory. Alternatively, we could write to a new directory, but for now, we will delete it and rerun the program. Now it looks good. To verify that Hive support is working, we will create a Hive table using Spark SQL. Let's create a sample table. Using Spark SQL, we can create a table. All these concepts will be explained in detail later in the course. For now, 
Just test Hive support by running a Spark SQL query to create a table. Let's remove the fastdf directory because the CSV write operation still exists. If not removed, it may cause conflicts when running the program again. Let's run the program. It executed successfully. We can see new directories created under the Metastore DB directory. Hive stores its metadata in this directory. The Spark Warehouse folder contains the table. We can see the SRC table inside. If we write data to this table, it will be stored as files inside the Spark Warehouse and SRC directories. Thank you for watching. For the full course on Spark Scala, find the link to the top rated Udemy course in the description. Please subscribe for more informative content on cloud, data, AI, and generative AI. Hit the bell icon to receive future notifications.